Welcome back. For the most part, when you get your uh, credit card bill each month, the so-called required minimum payment that you see on that bill represents about 2% of the balance you have outstanding. Well, some credit card companies are thinking about raising that, doubling it to 4%. Good idea? Bad idea. Joining us with both sides of that issue, Michael McAuliffe uh, with us initially. He's president of Family Credit Counseling Service. He joins us today from Chicago. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. What do you think? Good idea, bad idea? Well, I think it's a good idea. And I think, unfortunately, over the years, consumers have become accustomed to charging things up and letting it go on for 30, 35 years. The cost for that, the burden that they're under is terrible. And this is one of the ways to fix that. What about for those people who can't afford 4% of the initial balance? Well, it's hard medicine to, to swallow. With any medicine, I think you're going to have side effects. And there are going to be some people this is going to hurt. And there are alternatives for them. Uh, I know we talk to hundreds of families a day. And when we look at the budget, we find discretionary spending. They could put extra money toward these minimums, but they choose not to because there's other things they want. They don't see debt reduction as a priority. Why would banks be doing this? Well, it's actually the Office of the Comptroller of Currency have been after the banks for quite some time now to get these payments increased. They, uh, you know, they, they've been going on it's so long and everyone's getting concerned. We've got people that are really going to have these debts for 30, 35, 40 years making minimum payments. Uh, you're paying for your TV longer than your house. Joining us now on the other side of that is Robert Manning. He's the professor of finance at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Professor, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. What do you think of uh, the banks want to raise that minimum on the, uh, the balance on a credit card? You know, this is a real difficult situation because this was not intended to help consumers. This is really an issue with the FDIC and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency that's concerned about some portfolio quality of some bank credit card debt, particularly in regard to subprime lending. Uh, the problem here is, is that the banks have overlent, they've overextended people, they are charging much higher interest rates than they would in terms of uh, general underwriting criteria for consumer loans, and now they want the best of both worlds. They want people to repay at 28 percent instead of giving some responsible relief to consumers that they knew when they made the loans they couldn't possibly repay them. Wait a this minute, is the, the, you're saying that the high credit card balances that we see for the most part throughout the country are the bank's fault? What we're seeing here for certain segments of the market that the banks know that if somebody already has $25,000 in credit card debt, that that next $25,000 in line of credit that they offer is very, very highly risky and yet they want to be repaid at the same rate as the very first loan that was made. And what we're seeing here is that people are in debt, and this law is trying to improve an understanding of what the portfolio value of the bank's outstanding debt is, rather than to put people on a schedule that will enable them to responsibly repay. Mr. McConnell, I would imagine that as a credit counseling service, you would tell people to pay more than the minimum balance anyway, right? Or the minimum uh, required payment. Well, absolutely. And I can't uh, agree that 35-year repayment is a responsible way to pay back debt, especially when we talk about unsecured debt. The majority of credit card transactions are discretionary spending. It's not things we need. It's electronics. It's clothes. It's groceries going out to eat. I mean, it's, it, we're, we're spending a lot of money on it. Yeah, what about that, Professor? I mean, you know, if you just pay that 2% every month, you're never going to get that paid off. It's going to take you right. years to do it. Why not pay more? Well, you know, it's a little bit duplicitous to have consumer credit counseling that acts on behalf of banks to have a repayment schedule that creditors are going to get most of their money back when they know very well that charging people 20 or 25% is what's responsible for a 30-year repayment. If banks have loaned amounts of money that they know can't be repaid, they should work with consumers, bring that interest rate back down to 6 7%, and really have them become more responsible in their consumption. To argue in today's day and age that people are only charging with their credit card discretionary pur uh, purchases really flies in the face of the reality of what distress and financial problems in America today is all about. What about that, Mr. Pekalov? Well, if consumers are living off their credit cards, they've got more problems than what the banks are doing with issuing the credit cards. If you're using your credit cards for your living expenses, you've got some serious problems, and paying those living expenses off over the next 30 years is just a bad idea for consumers. To burden them with 35 years for paying off credit card debt for things they need today, when are they going to get out of that? 
And indeed, that's where credit counseling should come in and negotiate on behalf of creditors to get a 6% interest rate rather than protecting the position of banks to make them repay it. Yeah, but that's not like that it happened given the number of delinquencies and, and the, uh, th the threat of ID theft. These credit card companies have enough uh, expenses to begin with, and that's why we're paying these high rates to begin with, isn't it, Professor? Oh, no, I think that flies in the face of the reality of an industry that's registered seven consecutive record years of profitability where the cost of the money that they lend to consumers has declined over four years and they didn't pass on those savings to consumers. All right. That's really a different approach to what the cost of credit is all about. Gentlemen, thank you both. Appreciate it uh, very much. Robert Manning, the professor of finance at Rochester Institute of Technology. Michael McAuliffe of the, the uh, Family Credit Counseling Service in Chicago.